So 2024 keeps giving us AI wins, and this next one comes right on the heels of the initial Fixtral release yesterday. Someone named Marcel has already ported Fixtral to run on MLX, which is basically the fastest way to run AI on Apple Silicon at the moment. It's pretty much a architecture that uses some special array access features and memory access techniques that makes just about anything that you could previously run on Apple Silicon with GGML run even faster. So for those of you who don't know what Fixtral is, Fixtral is is this incredible new mixture of experts model. It's a little bit smaller, so as opposed to Mixtral from Mistral AI, which uses eight experts, this is using two or four, and the experts are actually der derivations or fine tunes of Microsoft's Phi2 model. So the core focus was coding, but it actually turns out that this is actually much better, even at you know pros and other things. And the, the big takeaway here is that when you combine these two or four experts that are based on Phi2, Fixtral actually produces output that's around 5% more performant, which people aren't exactly sure why that is just yet, but the benchmarks don't lie. So why is this such a big deal? Again, it's a big win for Apple, and it's a big win because Apple released a framework, developers absolutely ate it up, and the insane velocity of AI development in late 2023, now in the new year of 2024, is proving to uh, just attract more developer mind share. So people who want to do cool stuff with AI are generally doing it on, on either NVIDIA or Apple hardware. And if you want to deploy it elsewhere, Apple is the first step because if you get it running on Apple Silicon, it opens up access to running it on an iPhone or even an Apple Watch. And we've already seen in previous videos we've made how running Mistral 7B is now possible on an iPhone, which was something that even just two months ago would have been thought as maybe something that was nearly impossible. So who is Marcel? Basically, he's a engineer or a staff data scientist previously who worked at Spindrift. He does all kinds of stuff. He's posted about NLP, deep learning, computer vision. He's a pretty sharp guy, and you should definitely follow him on Twitter if you don't already. Maxime LeBond is another great guy to follow because he's one of the people who initially approached uh, using Mixture of Experts outside of Mixtral. And surely this has happened in private, but he's working in public, and that's always more interesting for us to follow and see, especially for myself as an engineer. So initially, we weren't sure how easy this would be to run. Obviously, Mixtral was kind of a new architecture, especially coming from the area of like Llama 70B and Mistral 7B. So what's cool is this now gives us some structure to run it on Apple Silicon, and maybe we'll see it on a phone sometime soon. But where this showed up is actually pretty interesting. So MLX is part of the ML Explorer repo that Apple now maintains publicly. And basically this is a, what, what Apple calls an array framework for machine learning on Apple Silicon brought to you by Apple. And effectively they're providing some more APIs here that are quite familiar. So they're optimizers, they're composable function transformations. And basically this wants to just make doing ML stuff on Apple hardware easier. Now where do we initially see this cool quirk of Marcel making this run on Apple Silicon? So, for those of you who don't know, a pull request is basically a request to add your code to a repo and do it publicly. And right here, he's basically saying, yeah, I just got Fixtral 4x28 and 2x28 running on Apple Silicon, and this is what you need to run it on MLX. And we can see this happened just 15 hours ago, which is incredibly cool. And what's awesome is you can just run it with Fixtral.py. Uh, I would run this right now, but I need to update macOS, and we'll probably do a separate video on running this specifically. I've also just gotten my hands on a few different M3 MacBook Pros, and I can't wait to show you guys what's possible both on the lowest end M3 MacBook Pro and the highest end, uh, even though we haven't seen what might become the M3 Ultra just yet from Apple. And while we're on the subject, I think a lot of people have some trouble understanding where to follow Apple's developments here. There are a lot of people who look at the GGML repos and say, oh, well, like these are predominantly aimed at Apple Silicon, why not just follow here? But in my opinion, ML Explorer and this repo called ML Examples, which is getting a ton of attention and pull requests from developers all over the world, I think this is cool. And if you wanna start doing stuff on Apple Silicon, I also think this is quite cool. Now, what's interesting is there are two big kind of pools of thought on where you should spend your time if you want to get into AI. It's whether you, know, you should go rent time on Google Colab or on something like Vast or TensorDoc, or you know, do stuff more locally and take more of a open source LLM plunge on Apple Silicon. And I think Apple Silicon is great, and right now I do both. I don't really have one major preference either way. I still think that the bleeding edge will always be 
predominantly focused on higher end GPUs. And what's cool is, you know, smaller quantizations are showing up faster and faster. And there's, and there's better and better resources coming out every day to actually show you exactly how to do these. Um, I don't think I'm the best at explaining these right now, but maybe in the future I will be. For the time being, I wanna link you guys to the best stuff I have found so far. For me, I think the really different approaches to where you derive value from using these open source LLMs on Apple Silicon and on NVIDIA hardware. NVIDIA, again, you can run the biggest models as fast as you want and really see what the current state of the art is. But running with smaller quantizations is a great way to learn. And I think it shows that Apple has played their cards nearly perfectly, even though, as I mentioned before, um, Android already has GGML forked in. So technically any phone running the latest version of Android has LLMs already on chip. And what's also kind of cool is Apple's doing this with generic silicon that has their neural compute engine. They're not necessarily relying on exotic TPUs like Google's Coral uh, TPUs that they have in some of their phones, but it's hard to say that they're really that pervasive. And this is one really cool example of MLX gaining traction really, really quickly. I think it's also import important to note that Whisper has gotten easily 200% faster uh, with the advent of MLX and with people optimizing it for Apple Silicon. And what's really cool is to watch Microsoft try to play catch up here uh, with specific versions of Windows meant for AI development and Intel trying to make certain driver optimizations for some of their coprocessors. The irony of all this is that even though Microsoft owns some of the most powerful AI companies in the world, it's still really hard to do AI development on Windows without feeling like you're wasting your time or that you should just wipe Windows off the machine and install Linux. So definitely follow Maxime and Marcel. If you like this video, please like and subscribe. We're gonna be covering way more content like this. Uh, we always enjoy your comments, so if you like this video and wanna give us feedback or you didn't like it, please let us know in the comments below and we'll see you in the next video.